Okay, so you guys, a year ago, I finally took the plunge and I got solar panels for my Airbnb in Palm Springs. The electric bills were just getting higher and higher and I needed to do something about it. Damn. In fact, the highest bill we've ever had was $892 of June of 2022. Getting solar can be quite an investment and a lot of people are interested in solar, but don't know if it's actually worth it. And I had the same questions before I got solar a year ago. Now we can really see if it was worth the cost and how much savings I've actually had from these. I'll also go over the return on investment and if I think it's worth it overall. So the cost of this solar system was $20,000. So that got me 20 solar panels, all of the electrical involved with installing solar panels, and the solar inverter. So I opted not to get a battery because they're quite expensive and I applied within the time frame of NEM 2.0, which basically means I can sell my extra energy back to the grid at the price I buy it for. After April of 2023, if you applied to get solar panels, you could only sell back your extra energy for a fraction of the price that you buy it for. So pre April 2023, it made more sense to not get a battery, but if you're getting solar after April 2023, it makes more sense to get a battery. This is the size of the system, and it's about what we could fit on this roof. It's not that big of a house. A system of this size can produce around 13,000 kilowatt hours per year. In reality, it ended up being closer to 12,000 kilowatt hours because it was pretty rainy this last year. And we knew going into it that this was a slightly smaller system than needed, and we were still going to have a bill from our utility company for both both fixed fees and a little bit of the electricity. So a common misconception with solar is that if you get it, you will have no electric bill at all. And that's just not true. As long as you're connected to the grid, you're still gonna have some fees you have to pay. How much they are depends on how big of a size you get and if you get batteries. So these are the fees that you're gonna have to pay to be connected to the grid each month, regardless of how big your solar system is. And then if you have a smaller system size, you are gonna use some energy from the grid. So you're gonna have a larger bill. Just being realistic, 20,000 dollars is usually not going to fully cover your utility bill unless you have a very small house you know there are some situations where it might work but here in the california desert not how it works i didn't get any batteries anything like that those can be like eight grand a pop sometimes you need multiple of them so it is a smaller solar system but it actually had a pretty big impact on the bill not to spoil it but um let's get into it so for some context, you need to see what we were paying before we got solar. These were all of our electric bills in 2023. You can see very high for such a small house. Electricity is just very expensive in the California desert. Because it gets so hot, we have to run the AC often and the pool pump and hot tub also consume a lot of electricity year round. Overall, it's usually somewhere around 1400 kilowatt hours per month. The system was turned on midway through January, so that month was only like half solar. The following month was when we could really see how it impacted the bill. February was the first month where we could really see the impact of solar. The total bill was $280 in the previous year, it was 557. So this was actually a 50% decrease exactly, which I was very pleased with. Here's what the electric bill ended up being the rest of the months of the year. As you can see, once the solar was fully turned on, it was never more than $300 a month, which is really good. And December is not fully complete, but I'm going with the same numbers as December because it should be pretty similar. And here's how each monthly bill compares to when we didn't have solar in 2023. You can see it's usually a about 50% lower, but actually sometimes more. March and April is actually when we saw the biggest decrease. And I think that's because that's when most people are at the house using a lot of electricity, but most of it was just being generated from the solar. You'll notice a big difference in the cost from winter to summer, in part because of course we're using the AC way more in the summer, but it's also because the utility company increases the rates slightly in the summer. So the time of the year you're using the most electricity, you're also paying the highest rates. The only month that I'm confused by is September. It actually was pretty similar in September and I really don't know why. I've been looking at each bill and I just can't really figure out why in September. I'm like, hello, were the panels turned on? I mean, I know that's not how they work, but I think it's just that in 2023, for whatever reason, not much electricity was used that month. I really don't know why. We must have let it get really, really hot in the house September of 2023. So on average, the bill went from $620 a month to $253 a month. So much lower. It's actually a 60% decrease 
increase on average. So it ended up being even better than I expected. I was hoping for 50% and we got 60%, which I was happy about. And now the final total over the course of a year. So 2023, remember we spent about $7,400 on electricity. And this year in 2024, it's looking like the total is going to be $2,916. That's actually really good. A 60% decrease on our electric bill. That is a $4,500 savings. Like that is actually pretty major for our Airbnb, even better than I expected. It makes it so that it will take 4.4 years for the solar panels to pay for themselves essentially. And then of course you still save after that. So over the course of 30 years, it'll be tens of thousands, probably like six figures worth of savings by having these solar panels. You can see over 30 years with solar panels, it would be about $90,000. This is without inflation and without solar panels, it would be over $200,000. So a total savings of $133,000 over 30 years. When you factor in inflation though, the savings is even higher. It's about $212,000. So how did selling back to the grid impact the savings? Honestly, it didn't impact them as much as I thought it would. This column right here shows how much we were able to sell back to the grid each month. In total, it was about $700 for the year. The interesting thing is in the summer, I wasn't able to sell anything back to the grid. I assumed that's when I would sell the most back because the days are longer, you generate a lot of electricity, and there's usually like not anyone here at the house in the summer anyway. But it turned out that we still ended up using a lot. I think because the pool pump is always going, the hot tub is always being heated, and the AC is still on making it a little colder in there. The thing is, in the summer, it can be anywhere from 110 to 120 degrees outside, and we need to make sure it's under 90 degrees inside or else wood will start getting warped. Anything that has a wood laminate will start to peel. And I've also heard that it can damage drywall over time. Yeah, I was a little disappointed that we weren't able to really make some money in the summer, but that's how it turned out. In total, we ended up selling back $705 to the grid that today you wouldn't be able to, you would get about 25% of that. Because I got in before that NEM 3.0 deadline, I'm able to sell it at a slightly higher rate. You're able to sell it for the same rate you buy it for, but not really because you're really only able to sell it back for the lowest rate you buy it back for. So I can sell it back to them at the super off peak rate. I looked at every single bill for the year and it's always pretty much being sold back at the lowest rate, super off peak, never really at mid peak or off peak even. But is solar worth it for you? Honestly, there's so many factors to consider. First of all, some places electricity isn't that expensive. Washington state, for example, not really that worth it to get solar because electricity is really cheap there and it's also really cloudy. But somewhere like California, Hawaii, these states where you get a lot of sunshine, the electricity is super expensive, it becomes kind of a no-brainer as long as you're gonna keep the house for a long time. Like if I was gonna sell this house in five years, it wouldn't really make that much sense. There's also leasing solar, there's financing it, there's a lot to consider, but I go way more in depth on the different options in the other video I made. I even interviewed my solar provider. So if you're wondering like which solar might be right for you that's a better video to watch this was more to just see how mine panned out and i'm really happy with the results um i hope that you guys enjoyed watching i hope that some of you end up going solar because it also is great of course knowing it's clean energy i charge my car with it like it's it's awesome i'll link the other video and i'll also link my solar provider if anyone wants to talk to him because they do solar like all over the u.s and hope that you guys enjoyed watching this one i'll see you in my next video bye